Hello everybody and welcome to my live video on tips and tricks for oil and cold wax painting. So I want to tell you um, that what I'm going to do today, um, so my idea for this whole series is to try to teach you something that you might not get in other places. So I know there's lots of other videos showing you um, how to actually use oil and cold wax and you know how to apply it and stuff. So I, I have been an art teacher for the past 30 years, yike. And um, so I would like to focus more on art fundamentals. So composition and design, color theory, edge control, um, you know, places for your focal point and how you lead someone around a painting. So I'm hoping that that will be helpful for you. Um, so I have, um, I'm, this is right now, my husband spent, whoa, three hours with me yesterday trying to rig up a system. So it's a little clunky changing between this view and my, my uh, workspace view, but it works really well. So I'm going to turn it now so that you can see my workspace. And um, so what I'm working on here is I'm working on an old glass window pane that came out of somebody's window. I found it in the trash and I put a piece, two pieces of um, the Grey Matters palette paper on the back so that I would have a grey surface. And um, I could have also painted this by making some, tinting some gesso and putting a couple of layers of gesso on, that works too, but if you scrape it accidentally, then you have to repaint it. So what I've got today, I'm gonna just tell you a few things that you might've missed from my very first video that didn't go very well. These things that I have over my paint, they're called paint savers. And um, what I, I looked, they're not in stock right now, sorry, but if you can get them somewhere, they're pretty cool. I just put um, a piece of um, felt in the bottom and then if you, this is clove oil. I know everything's backwards to you so I'm not going to try to get you to watch text but if you put a few drops of clove oil in there, smells beautiful, and then just put the little house um, over the painting paint, then it keeps the paint a little bit longer. Oil paint dries by oxidization, which means air. So if you limit the air getting in here, you're going to limit the drying time. So I have a few colors already here, and these colors have been here for, uh, let's see, four days probably. So I have some Gamblin's Warm White, that's this, and it's already mixed with some cold wax. I have um, white paint. It's cheap Winton student grade white. Um, I also have a tube of Richeson oil white. Richeson paint is a little stiffer. I prefer um, the Graham paint, but this is what I had in a big jar right now in case I run out. Um, this is quinacridone gold, Daniel Smith, and you can see it's I'm almost out. I will need more paint for this. I should put my gloves on. These are nitrile gloves that I just bought in a box at Costco. They're really nice because they're really thick and they, they don't rip and they have kind of a coating inside so they're really easy to get on and off. So I really like those a lot. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit more of that gold paint. I have a really neat trick, tip for you. If you've ever seen one of these, this is a tube ringer. And I have one of these that's metal also. Um, I carry the light plastic one when I go and paint, plan our painting. But basically, you just squeeze it up and then it's really super easy to get all of the paint out of the tube and you just roll up this at the end. So that works really well. I'm also going to squeeze out some Gamblin Indian Yellow. And the reason I'm picking Indian Yellow is because it is very, very transparent. I'm just going to move these piles over here a little bit. Every time you pick up um, paint with your, your um, uh, palette knife, you lose some, which is a pain in the butt, but that's the way it goes. And just wipe it off. And I use Kleenex to do that 
because I find that having a lot of paper towel, by the time you folded it over and over, you're getting more on you than you're throwing away. And, and I buy really cheap Kleenex. This is not, but I buy really cheap Kleenex from the dollar store, so I'm not spending a lot of money on it. So here is Indian Yellow, and you can see it looks kind of orange when it comes out of the tube, but it's really a yellow, but it's transparent. And I want to, oops, I want to talk to you about the difference between opaque and, and um, transparent paints today as well. I should probably tell you why I'm getting these particular colors out as soon as I figure out how to get the lid back on here. Okay. So I'm going to show you why I'm choosing these colors, which I should have done at the very beginning. Let me turn my iPad on here. Okay, I don't want coronavirus updates. Where's my Pinterest? Here. So I keep Pinterest folders on my Pinterest file. And if I click on my little face down here, I can see my boards. So I have, hope you can see that okay, I have boards for all kinds of topics on here. So as I go through, um, look, I look at art a lot on the internet, as well as knitting obviously, how to fix your art studio. Anyway, you can find my board at Sharon Lynn Williams Artist on Pinterest. So you're welcome to come and look at all of my folders. Um, so I have a folder on cold wax paintings, and this is just um, whenever I see one that I like, I throw it into here. They're not in that cold wax painting. There's some stuff that isn't cold wax. I don't know why it's in there, but sometimes that happens. But what I'm trying to show you here is a folder I made called color combinations. So when I'm going to look online and I see a painting I really love and I like the color of it, I'll throw it in this folder. So there's a few here by, um, oh, I can't remember her name at the second. I knew that was going to happen. Um, anyway, so there's just different color schemes that I like. I'm not paying attention to the subject necessarily. It's just the way the colors relate. So this is a lovely orange and a very soft green um, palette, which is quite a nice, it's a near complement palette, which works really well. I'm going to do that a different time. So here's an analogous palette. That means they're, they've used three colors from the top of the color wheel. So they've got yellow, orange, and red, and then it looks like they've got a black and a white. So that's an analogous uh, color scheme. I'll talk about the kinds of color schemes um, on further videos and why you might want to use them. So as I was strolling through this last night, I saw one that I really, that really touched me today. And now, of course, I can't find it. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, so this is the one we're looking at here. Um, so this, I'll touch with this. So this has a black by the looks of things. It has yellow, obviously, and it has an orange and it has white. So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to try to pick the color tubes that I want for this painting without having too many colors. So I'm trying to limit my palette, okay? So I have, I picked a chromatic black by Gamblin. Chromatic black means that it's a black that's made from all the other colors. So it doesn't, it isn't like an ivory black or a Mars black or a carbon black. It's a black that's actually been made with the other colors um, to make a black, which I really like. It has, it's really nice to give some color identity. So yellow is dominant here. So I've chosen, this is not the yellow I would normally use, but this is an opaque yellow. This is Gamblant Radiant, Ye Radiant Yellow. And I meant to get my CAD yellow out by Gamblin, but obviously I forgot that. So I'm just looking at that color of yellow. Now that, look at the juice in there. That means that there's just lots of me, um, solvent mixed in with the paint. The paint, I haven't used this tube for a couple of years. I bought all of the range of radiant colors a couple of years ago. The radiant colors actually have a higher pigment load and they're very opaque. So they're kind of useful that way. So I have a transparent yellow and an opaque yellow, and then I have a muted earth yellow. 
since yellow is the dominant color. I have a little bit here of transparent orange oxide in case the yellow isn't orange enough for me. So I will add a bit of this to it. And I also have out ready some cadmium yellow middle, which is also an opaque paint, um, in case the orange isn't orange enough for what I'm doing, okay? I'm just gonna leave that aside. The, the transparent orange oxide is also a transparent color. That will become really important when I start to show you how to use opaques and transparents in your painting. I'm not going to make a painting from this today. I'm going to show you how, to, how I'll mix the color, okay? So I have four tubes of paint, white and black. Now probably I didn't really need all of these. Um, I might not need this yellow, but this yellow is I think might be the only yellow I need. So we're gonna, that's why I put it out here. So the first thing we need to do is to get our cold wax and I'm using Gamblin's. And I should roll up my sleeves before I start getting muddy. I have a broken stir here that I just used to get out my wax. And I'm going to put, I uh, hope you can see that. I'm going to put some, where am I gonna put it? I'm gonna put it over here, and I'm just gonna get out a bunch in case I need it, in case I need to go into some of these paints. So I'm not gonna mix all these paints first with cold wax. These have cold wax in them. Um, these ones do not have cold wax in them. I know I'm gonna use the black for sure, so I'm gonna, and I, I try to go about, half and half cold wax and um, paint. Let me get rid of these things. And I have two spatulas that I like to use in combination and you'll see why. I have a bit of mess there. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the black with the cold wax. The cold wax looks white, but it doesn't tint your paint because it will, it will act, is actually transparent. It's sort of like when you use acrylic mediums, um, they look white out of the tube, but then they, they um, change color to clear, which is most of the reason why your acrylic paint uh, ends up uh, drying darker, by the way. Okay, so now I have a choice here. I could add, I think I will, no, I won't. I could, if I was gonna paint right now, which I'm not going to, this is some um, Galkid Light that I poured into a dropper bottle. So I could choose to put a couple of, oh, one fell, a couple of drops <laughs> in, in there, um, and that will speed the drying. It also makes the paint a little looser because it's a little wet. Okay, so there is my chromatic black. And then I sort of have a way that I can try to get most of this off of my palette knife because I don't want to dirty up my other colors. So see what I mean by having a dirty Kleenex? Now, if I try to fold that over, I'm probably going to get something else on my hands. So, um, And the other color I'm pretty sure I'm going to need is that um, gold. Um, and the reason I think I'm going to need that gold, oops, got some paint on here is because this gold and this black are gonna make this green color. For some reason, that's what happens. There's enough blue in the black to make a green. Um, now, sometimes if you use different blacks, you'll get a different green, okay? So if you used ivory black or Mars black or carbon black, you'll get a different tone of green shouldn't say tone. Different hue of green is more exact what I mean. So let's just try that out, okay? So I, I want to try the yellow and the black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some runs here. I'm going to mix the yellow with the black with increasing amount of black and then I'm going to mix some yellow with white as a run. So I have little piles, mostly so that I can see what color I'm going to get more than I'm mixing enough to use for whole painting. That's not really the purpose of this. So I'm taking a little black here and a bunch of this yellow. Okay. 
Now, it's really hard to see this. It's looking quite brown here. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of this warm white to it so that maybe we can see what the color is. So you can see how that's a dark green, okay? And, as, and what I can do after I mix this up is I can hold it on my spatula over to my iPad and compare it with the colors that I'm trying to mix. So I want to have one that's a little darker than that. So I'm gonna take a little more black and a little more yellow. And it's sort of like cooking, you know, you have to kind of do this little bit by little bit. So there's a darker version and that is actually quite a brown green color. I'll put another little bit of um, some white warm white into that so that we can see what, what, we, what we've got. With really dark colors, sometimes it's really hard to see what color you've got. Those two right now look an awful lot alike to me. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a little more black into this pile because I wanna see a difference, okay? This is where working on this glass palette is so lovely. I don't have loose paper to deal with. So there's a different, this is a cooler black, cooler green. This is a warmer green. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that. This is the black. Now I'm gonna use my dirty spatula so I will get some green into it. But this is my real dark. That's mostly black with just a little bit of what was left over here. So I can look at my painting now and see, okay, whoop, rotate. Actually, that's not bad if it rotates because here it is, maybe that'll be a little easier. Hopefully you're not getting any reflections happening there. So I have this black to use here. I have this darker green. Can you see there's a cooler, darker green there? And there's a warmer green, which is the warmer greens up here. So I think that I've got the green and black, whoops. Cold wax is probably not very good for your iPad. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm gonna move on um, and I'm going to do some of that um, quinacridone gold with white now. And I'm gonna use this warm white. You can see I have a little dirty on there. I'm gonna to try to take that dirty bit off. But if there a little bit remains, it doesn't really matter. Um, and there's my yellow leaking. I don't think I'll probably even need to use that yellow, but let's get some of this yellow. So I have the yellow that's mixed with cold wax. I have now the yellow with cold wax mixed with the white with cold wax, okay? So now I'm gonna see on my picture, that looks pretty much, that's pretty good for there. And it's the nice thing about doing it this way, instead of adding additional colors, is all these colors are gonna be really harmonious with each other because they're all made from the same colors, okay? Um, Let's get a little bit more, and this time um, I'll put more of this warm white into this. So hopefully I'll have a lighter yellow. Kind of make sure you get it all scraped off, scraped up and mixed. And again, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a value change from the last pile that I made. This is very close. So I think I need to add more. So I'm adding more, and I'm using the warm white because I'm mixing warm colors. Um, this cool white, it's regular titanium white. Titanium white, when you add titanium white to a warm color, you will cool it as well as dull it. Okay, so now I have two different colors of white. I could use this as a third color, but I wanna show you what happens if you use white, okay? Because this is gonna give me a different kind of a yellow. This'll be a cooler yellow just because I'm using the white instead of the warm white. I'm trying to get something that is a little similar. So if you can see this color against that color, or even against that one, this is a little cooler. It's not extreme. So maybe I can add some more white to it so I have more of a change. What I'm looking for is that each of these piles has a change from the previous pile. 
and you need to mix it up again so that you make sure you've got your color homogeneous, okay? Again, it's not such a big change, so I'm gonna go back into my white and I'm gonna get even more white. The quinacridones are very strong pigments. They're very strong tinting. So I put too much yellow in this pile to begin with. You always wanna start with less than you think you need, not more than you think you need. So I think, so if you look at the yellow I've mixed, comparing it to the warm white out of the tube, you can see it's a different color of the same value, but it's a slightly yellow where that one's a slight orange, okay? Um, and then, so there, this is all made from black and white and quinacridone gold. So all those colors are gonna be really harmonious with each other. If I need, and then of course I've got the yellow count too, right? If I needed some yellow that went a little more red, I could add a little bit, try to just get a little bit, of this uh, transparent red oxide. And you can see if I put enough in it that it's making it a little redder. Um, I'm not sure if it's as red as I want it to be, so I'm gonna carry it over to my picture. Hopefully you can see my picture. Uh oh, darn. Swipe screens are really nice until you swipe them when you don't want to. Here we go. Okay, so that looks pretty darn good on there as the orange. And it is definite different color than this. Um, Actually, I might even mix it a tiny tad redder so that it's more different than that, okay? Now, the other thing I can do while I've got this is I could say, okay, well, let's add black to this, okay? Because that's gonna give us a different black. It's gonna give us a dark brown, okay? So when you mix the black with the orange, this orange doesn't have cold wax in it, so I need to put some cold wax in it. And let's see, that's a dark brown. I don't know if you can see that difference from where you are. Let's add some more red to it. Okay, so hopefully you can see the difference of this brown dark to this cool dark which is quite interesting. And now I need to get some cold wax into that. And into this pile too, because I didn't put cold wax in there. When I add the cold wax, you can see the color a little bit better. So I have a dark brown now, which is yummy. So what I like to do is just get it off of this palette knife and then just be able to just put a little bit of it on there and that sort of helps me not to lose my paint. So that, you can definitely see that now that that's a brown rather than black, okay? Now I need to clean all this stuff up. And you can see already my hands are getting very dirty. And so the handles of my tools get all dirty. So that is a bit of a problem with this medium, but I have another trick for you. And that is these things. These are Armor All, I know it's backwards to you, they're Armor All cleaning wipes. And they have this lemon um, in it, and there's no solvent, but they take all the paint off, and it they are so awesome. Baby wipes don't work this way because they have no solvent for the oil paint. Baby wipes work great for acrylic paint, but not for oil paint. So you can see there's my hands all clean, my tools will be all clean. And um, just with one wipe, and then you just fold the wipe over to get to a clean place. At the end of my, at the end of my painting, I have this, um, I got this at Princess Auto because I couldn't find a scraper with a wide blade. So I was using those gray ones that you slide the blade up with, but there wasn't enough space between the blade and the holder. So when I'm finished, I will scoop up, I will scoop up all of my piles 
and I will scoop them up in little domes so that I can put my houses on top of them, okay? Um, by the way, these houses come with one big one and six little ones, and they also have a pack now of three big ones, but like I said, you can't get them. But watch this, if I try to clean this up with a paper towel, I'm ripping the paper towel, it's being a mess, but if I use just use this rag that I've already used to clean everything else, it's really easy to clean. So these little, these are plastic, and then they have this little rubber gummy thing. They, it's not an airtight seal. Better design would have been if this would have been soft, so you could push it, get the air out, and would have made a suction here. But they didn't, so it doesn't. Okay, so now I think I've got all the colors that I need for this. So that's a little bit about how to mix color, how to have a limited palette um, so that you make sure you have a harmonious painting, okay? So that is how to find some paintings that you like the color of. I would suggest making, Pinterest is free. You can, and you can make a board if you go back to your, this isn't really a Pinterest lesson, but if you go back to, if you open Pinterest and you don't have it anymore, you don't have it, you can just create a profile on here and then you can always get to any boards that, that you like. Um, so as you're looking on the internet, um, you know, maybe you'll put this video into a folder called Cold Wax and then you'll have it so that you can have it for another time. Um, so again, if I look, just to recap, if I look at my board of color combinations, okay, hopefully you can see that. I'm sure there's some glare happening here, but you can sort of see all different kinds of color palettes. And what's interesting is these choices are unique to me. These are things that touched me and I went, oh, look at that. Okay, so your color choices might be different than mine and that's great actually. Um, because what you want is you want to use color in a way that is, is personal to you. So um, I had paint on my iPad, which now I have all over my hands, so my handy little armor on wipe is taking care of that, Get rid of that. Um, so um, yeah, so what I wanna try to do a little bit more in the series is talk about how to express you how not to copy other people, but to determine what you like and then how to bring that into your work. And I am actually devising a course called Personal Expression, which I will be uh, running, um, opening up in a few months from now. And it's gonna be one-on-one -on -one, and it's gonna be just totally about you and what you love. Um, I also want to tell you that on my website, which is SharonLynnWilliams.com, if you go to my website, there'll be a pop-up that asks you if you would like to have my quarterly newsletter. I usually send out just three or four a year. I really respect my people who have given me their emails. And in each newsletter, I give you a free download for some water for some wallpaper for your phone background. So that's kind of a nice little perk for that. Um, and in the news quarterly newsletter that I send out, I'll tell you all about my shows, my new art, my struggles, what's coming up for teaching, those kind of things. Um, if, you're, if you like this video and you know other people who are looking at doing some oil and cold wax, please tag them. And if you like this, please like it and share it and all those good things that just tells more people where we are. Um, and that's about it. So thanks so much for tuning in. I'm really happy to have met you virtually. Hopefully we will meet each other again next time. So anyway, take care. God bless. Stay safe.